In the Kingdom of Cambodia, also known as the land of the Khmer, the rural population once lived together peacefully under the reign of Prince Sihanouk. But in 1970, a coup d'etat sparked the Vietnam War. The Khmer Rouge subsequently ruled over the country with an iron hand. This was followed by almost 30 years of fear and terror. However, this is now history. Thus, reason and peace now rule the day. Sim Reap is a relatively small town, 315 kilometers north of Phnom Penh, capital of Cambodia. Growing tourism is creating a boom town here because Sim Reap is close to Angkor, the ancient capital of a huge and mysterious jungle realm. The temple district of Ta Prom is our first destination. It was built by King Jayavarman and is dedicated to the god Shiva. The temples of Angkor are the remains of various religious buildings that were built by more than 10 kings of the Khmer realm between the 7th and 16th centuries AD. The Ta Prom Monastery was built in 1186 in honor of the king's mother and was the center of the health care of those times for the entire country. This is a good example of how the encroachment of the dense jungle vegetation has affected various buildings. The fast-growing kapok trees grow quite tall and cover the impressive architecture beneath a thick covering of leaves. This jungle temple is reminiscent of one described by Kipling in his Jungle Book. Nature usually claims back its own. Over the centuries, moss, lichen and ferns have covered the numerous walls, delicate reliefs, broken columns and stone objects that are scattered on the ground. And the pale and gigantic roots of the kapok trees cling to the moss-covered walls of the temple complex. Everything is dominated by the encroachment of nature. The monastery was once home to 5,000, including more than 2,000 monks, plus 615 female dancers. In addition, more than 66,000 men and women from the surrounding villages actively served the monastery.
Well-preserved stone reliefs decorate the walls of the sanctuary and illustrate various stories. Stone figures located in niches indicate the artistry of those bygone times. Tar Prom demonstrates the fragility of man's creations compared to the constant forces of nature. Apsaras, the divine female dancers who once entertained the royal court. Angkor contains thousands of them. Even today, they battle against evil spirits and demons and triumph over them, driving them away. Various traditional and religious dances are still performed by a number of female dancers. However, the royal court of old boasted no less than 3,000 of them. Under royal rule, the Apsara dances performed solely for the royal court. But today, it's mainly for the tourists. How times change. The folk dancers describe the natural faith and daily life of the rural population. Ritual dances associated with ceremonial acts. The rice dance is extremely popular. It depicts daily work and bountiful harvests. And there's also the cardamom dance, during which fruit is gathered for the production of tea. Each gesture has its own symbolic meaning. Even the gracious movements of the fingers are full of expressive significance. Classical Apsara dances and folk performances have always played an important role in the lives of both the royal households and the Khmer people. The fishermen on the tributaries of the Tonle Sap live peacefully together in large families. They're not particularly interested in commerce or trade as their lives are dominated by Buddhism. Along the riverbanks are several plain wooden huts whose interiors are divided into a living room and cooking area plus sleeping quarters. Many families, including their household pets, live on small houseboats. Perfect for those who appreciate an occasional change of scenery. Close to Simrihap, 
The Tonle Sap Lake is a good place for a boat trip. Every six months, the direction of the water changes, an excuse for much celebration and festivity. In former times, the king of the day severed a ceremonial rope that spanned the river and thus awarded the water its freedom. This is a strange and fascinating world of floating villages, forests and a countless variety of colourful birds. The floating villages and their houseboats that move according to the water level are an intriguing sight. Chong Nihas is situated in the harbour basin of Simrihap. Ferry boats from Phnom Penh come here, a good source of income for the local tradesmen. Life here is dependent upon the watery landscape. Tonle Sap Lake contains an abundance of fish like nowhere else on earth a fact much appreciated by the local fishermen. They have adapted their lifestyle to the constantly changing water level. And if necessary, the floating villages can easily be moved to another location. During the rainy season, the Mekong travels through the Tonle Sap River and brings with it huge masses of water that increase the surface of the river sevenfold. The Street of the Giants leads to the entrance of Angkor Thom, the fourth and final capital of the old Khmer realm, surrounded by a mighty defensive wall. This area was once inhabited by priests, functionaries and military men. The king once used this large city as the administrative centre of his realm, with palaces and temple complexes. At its zenith, more people lived here than in any European city of the 20th century. It covers an area of over 9 square kilometres. To the north of this area, there was once a palace of which only the terrace of the elephants has survived to the present day. Each of its once splendid wooden buildings has long since perished. leads through a huge stone gateway into the five inner courtyards of the palace complex. Again, nothing remains of the various wooden buildings that once stood here. Most of the temple pyramid that was once decorated with precious stones has been overrun by the jungle. Only the king was permitted to set foot on it.
In the center of Angkor Thom is the Bayon, a Buddhist temple that was never completed, surrounded by water ditches. From a distance, it looks like a strange mass in the middle of the jungle. However, closer inspection reveals it to be an architectural masterpiece that contains a large variety of rooms. But most impressive are the 200 huge smiling faces that are set in stone. The external walls of both galleries are decorated with impressive flat reliefs that illustrate the daily life of bygone times. Archaeologists believe that each of the faces depicts a bodhisattva, a being that has attained the highest level of enlightenment on the threshold of Nirvana. In each epoch, each of the four Angkor cities was protected by the temple complex of Bantie Shre, a miniature replica of a city, with entrance gate, courtyards, water basins and temple. This temple is one of the few that was not built by a king, but by a Brahmin priest. Its name means Citadel of the Women. It was here that the most senior Brahmin canonized the water and with that the entire city and their ancestors. A ritual place of great significance. The beauty of the delicate stone masonry and reliefs of red sandstone are a captivating sight, true masterpieces of ancient Khmer culture. The entrance to the center of the complex leads through a large stone gateway across a ceremonial path flanked by water. Angkor's god kings had reservoirs built in order that the water would facilitate the disposal of their subjects. The view from the final gate is quite remarkable. The harmony of the architecture, the beauty of the buildings and the large variety of the decor is unique. Bantie Shri cannot be compared with the monumental buildings of the royal cities, but it is the finest example of artistic creativity. The innermost sanctuary is located in a courtyard that is surrounded by walls and three tower-like buildings with a vestibule.
two libraries and several long halls are closely packed together. They were used for meditation and ritual. Most of the walls have been decorated right down to the smallest detail. It's a truly impressive sight. Angkor was built by King Suryavarman II in the 12th century. At that time, it was the largest city in the world and covered an area the size of Manhattan. The city's temple mountain of Angkor Wat is a veritable masterpiece of architecture and Khmer reliefs. It is also the largest sacred building in the world. The huge complex is dedicated to the Hindu goddess Vishnu and extends over a larger area than Rome's Vatican City. A water ditch fends off the hustle and bustle of the town. This large courtyard is surrounded by a labyrinth of corridors. Each of the walls contains artistic reliefs that feature the wonderful Apsara dances. The divine dancers were trained in the royal court and were only allowed to dance for the king. Many illustrations indicate their esteemed position in the royal court. It took 37 years to build this temple complex and it stood for a thousand years. In the middle of this large courtyard are five multi-floored towers representing the five summits of Mount Meru, home of the Hindu gods and the center of the universe. But there are still many questions that remain unanswered with regard to the purpose of this sacred building. Was it the country's largest temple, built in the largest city? Or did the king have a mausoleum built here? The latter seems to be the most likely, as only a chosen few were permitted to enter the temple complex. Along seemingly endless corridors are illustrations of ancient Hindu mythology. They extend for a hundred meters. Chieftains with horses and battle chariots and armor-clad soldiers brandishing spears, a battle between good and evil. Apsaras and Divas Female dancers and goddesses adorn the walls of the sanctuary's inner courtyard. Eventually, the Khmer were defeated by their enemy, the Siamese. The city was conquered and a golden era of culture came to an end.
In the Middle Ages, Angkor was the largest city in the world, a wonder of the world and a shining example of Asian culture. The majestic silence amid the temples and dense jungle vegetation seems to highlight Angkor's immortal splendor and its magnificent contribution to Asian history and culture.